Hi, in this video we will uh, find some sample solutions for exercises of chapter 3 of a textbook. These exercises are um, part of the activities of in unit 4. The programming exercise 3.1, they want us to determine if three given numbers, that's what they have here, so we got three given numbers, if these three given numbers are the size of an equilateral then we what we need to do is check if the first the second and the third number are equal if that's the case then the triangle is an equilateral otherwise it's not let's divide this problem in two parts in the first part of the of the problem we need to request the inputs then the first part of the problem you are asking for three numbers so you got three input statements the input statement remembers that that's a string so you make that an integer and then you got the three size now the second part of the problem is now that we have the three numbers we need to make a decision are these three number equals if they are equal then the, tri the triangle is equilateral, otherwise it's not. So this is a decision statement, this is a single if statement. So a possible if statement will look like this. So we check if the psi1 equals psi2 and psi2 equals psi3, then it is equilateral, otherwise it is. Now for the second programming exercise which is programming exercise 3.2 they still given us three numbers so this problem uh, is also to verify that this is a triangle but now this is a right triangle now following the Pythagorean theorem so the, the following the Pythagorean theorem we got a triangle and the triangle of course it has three sides and the longest side is the one that we call the hypotenuse and the other are the legs so the, the square of the hypotenuse, that means one of the sides is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides okay now what they are giving me as input is side 1, side 2, side 3 so I don't know if side 1 is C or side 1 is A or side 1 is uh, B so we need to find the possible combinations. If there is a combination in which two of the sides, the, the sum of the square of two of the sides is equal to the square of the other side, then that's the Pythagorean theorem, and then that's the uh, <coughs> then then we can determine that this is actually a right triangle. So then on the next section of the program, after we got the three sides, we're going to compute the squares. So we compute the squares as indicated, and now we're gonna find to find the the make the determination if if any combination of this is equal to uh, I mean if the sum of two of the size is equal to the square of the other remaining side, right? So we're gonna have to find all combinations. In this case, there will be three possible combinations. So here we have all possible combinations. So look, in this case we say maybe a square three is the hypotenuse, maybe a square one, or maybe a square two. So here are the three possible combinations to find the hypotenuse, and then if that's the case, the uh, other two sides, the square of the other two sides, should be equal to that, right? If one of these possible combination is true, then it is a tri right triangle. Otherwise, it isn't. For exercise, programming exercise 3.3, they want us to modify an existing program. So we need to be sure that first we understand the program that, uh, that, that is given. So in this case, the, the existing program is asking for a smaller and a larger number. So let's say that you want to play the game that you're gonna guess in a number between 1 and 100 then your smaller is 1 that will be smaller and your larger is 100 
I mean, the same, you can probably play the game that you want to find a number between 20 and 50, then the smaller is 20 and the larger is 50. Now, this statement is getting a number at random, and this will count all the uh, attempts that you have to determine the number. Now, this part is also important to understand a while loop, so this will be looping for a number of times, I don't know how many. The only way to exit this loop is when we break it right here, when you got it right. So here, uh, we're asking the user, okay, what's your guess? So there are three possibilities. Either the guess is less than the number, which in this case is too small. If the guess is larger, or you got it, then you break it and the program exits. Okay, so now, these are the new instructions. In this case, it says the computer must make no more than the minimum number of guesses and it must prevent the user from cheating by entering misleading hits. So these are the main changes. So here we need a math uh, library so we can be able to use log and, uh, I will, uh, and, and this will be a formula that will determine the max number of guesses if I mean you are not I mean you are not cheating you are not making a change on, on the on, on, on the algorithm. So so look the you enter you play in a game again in this case you say what is the the number that you want the computer in this case to guess is a number between smaller and larger. Here we're gonna count the number of guesses and this is the max number of guesses. When count reaches this number, then we say, well, there was something wrong because you, I mean, it's not a possible way that that I can be guessing for this number of times and I still didn't get it. So this is this is a given formula. So we don't need to go into the discussion. So this is a given formula for following this algorithm. So you just have to implement it the way that is listed here, larger minus smaller plus one, and I mean the log base two of this of this number. That will be the max number of, of guesses. Okay, then uh, we round it because this may not be an, uh, I mean this, this number that we get from the log is probably gonna have decimal, so we round it. Now here we got an infinite loop, and um, now, the difference is that the user knows the number and is going to see if the, num if the computer can find the number that you're thinking that is between, and suppose, between 1 and 100. Okay, so the, the computer is going to follow this algorithm, in which case it's going to get <coughs> the smaller plus the larger divided by 2. Let's say that is something like 1, the smaller is 1 and the largest is uh, 100, so the algorithm that they're going to follow, they're going to say, well, let's start with 50 that is in the middle, and then it's going to ask it, is the number that you're thinking 50? So now, maybe it is, and then and then, and then then you say, uh, in this case, it is, I mean, you answer with either it is equal, less, or greater with these three symbols, so it is equal, they found it, but maybe you change and you say e is 50, but I don't want the computer to win, and then you're going to change it to maybe 40. And that's the part that you're going to be cheating because now you're going to increment the number of guesses if you keep changing the number. If you keep changing the number that you're thinking, it's going to exceed the max number of guesses. So if uh, <coughs> if everything is okay, I mean, but remember, we're counting the number of guesses. I mean, if, if, if I got it right, then it breaks the loop and exits. Otherwise, um, it will... Um, It will see if count is not equal to max number of guesses. If it is, then we stop the game and say I'm out of guesses because you were changing the number. So if I didn't get it and I still have guesses, then I will still try and say, well, it's less. If it is less, if it wasn't less, then it's going to be larger, right? And then this is the way that I'm going to be uh, following. So for example, in this case, I, th I went with 50, and it wasn't 50, so now I'm, I'm going to go with uh, the, I mean, I'm, I'm decrementing larger and I'm decrementing, I mean, or, or incrementing smaller 
to to make the the range smaller in my, in my search I mean with this is this is just an algorithm for me to searching for the number and then I go back over here and I also do the following formula that we were doing before to determine the my my next guess 